Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Hello, Brother Charles. Hello, Marcella. Patricia, good to see you. My sweet friend, I've been missing you. Uh, never can get enough of Patricia Hurt. Hello. Can you all hear me well? Hello, Kansas. Hello, Vicki. We're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> hey, good to have you. Hello, everybody. Awesome, Liz. Liz has uh, brought on another Shibola family member, Michelle, in Mississippi. Hello, Michelle. Welcome to our little fun family. We're glad to have you. God bless you. Hello, everybody. Good day, good day. Yes, we did. Uh, we went over the Top Gun uh, winners. We had a lot of, lot of recognition last night. Our ace, number one, our ace from the top two week Top Gun challenge was Bullseye. That is, Bob, uh, some of you are asking me, Bob, Bobby Cunningham lost 14.2 pounds in two weeks. That wasn't the most weight loss. Uh, Knuckles, Tabitha Rogers lost the most weight in two weeks, 17.2 pounds. Bullseye lost 14.2 pounds in two weeks. Bullseye, uh, Bobby Cunningham lost 8.1% of beginning body weight and achieved 9,180 exercise repetitions and uh, got the most, most of her points that she was awarded was because she won 758 battle buddies. So tremendous job by everyone. But our Top Gun, school one, our first round of Top Gun, we'll do another one in August, uh, was won by Bobby Cunningham. Amazing. Just crazy. Crazy what the Lord is doing here. Uh, and then we had people do what, you know, what uh, is the standard, you know, 1% of their body weight each week. We had you know, folks losing three pounds in two weeks, that's great. If you do the math over the course of a year, uh, that's still a lot of weight. So good stuff happening. We're moving in the right direction. Good to have you all today. Uh, some quick introductions. My name is Travis Martin. I've lost over 100 pounds on this program, this lifestyle that I've been living for so long. I lost over 100 pounds, come off all prescription medications, Programs changed me inside and out and is continuing to do so uh, primarily because of the Shibola family. What great people I'm around uh, every, every single day. Birds of a feather flock together. Y'all are helping elevate me through your amazing determination and drive and love and support of Shibola. So thank you for all you do. We've got members who have self-reported now. Uh, since we haven't been counting the pounds the whole time I've been um, – hosting these, uh, but our members uh, from the time that we did start self-reporting have self-reported more than 4 million pounds lost and more than 7 million inches lost. Uh, progress report today, yesterday, yesterday we had uh, 51 members lost weight for a total of 70.2 pounds in one day, an average per person of 1.38 pounds. We had 181 badges earned, two 25 pound badges earned, Kayla Bauer and Colleen Forgey, a 25 pound badge earned, congratulations. We had 155 um, Cheerful as a Cricket t-shirts uh, that or the cheerful as a cricket t-shirt that was uh, earned. You, you can earn the right to, to wear it. Each day we do something like that. This is, if you can see it, let me take this virtual screen off for a moment. This is our Wednesday shirt. Busy as a bee, cheerful as a cricket, steady as a clock. So on Wednesday, after you have four perfect Wednesdays in a row, you unlock this T-shirt. 
and it's something fun for you to do that will help you lose weight if you go for it. Every day's a new T-shirt. Every day of the week is a different T-shirt, I should say. And after four, per, I believe it's four, four perfect Wednesdays in a row, you unlock the Steady as a Clock T-shirt, and that that helps Shibboleth, and hopefully it's fun for you and gives you something to strive for. So congratulations on the ones that earned the the right to unlock the uh, Cheerful as a Cricket T-shirt. Very proud of you. Uh, those weekend shirts seem to be a little more difficult for – thank you, Joni. I, I thought so. Uh, Sasha and I had went back and forth on those rules for a while, and I forget them. So Joni says, all of your Wednesdays in the month need to be perfect. Thank you for correcting me. July has five Wednesdays, so you got to work a little harder – in July. Thanks for correcting that. I was sitting there hesitating because I thought that I was wrong. It seemed like to me, Sasha and Sergey um, with the, the website code needed to do it a little different than how I had originally asked for it to be done, which is fine. We need to make it a little more difficult. I can be too easy on people. Uh, but uh, good job. That's, that's, we're doing great. Had seven fast track badges earned. If you're here today and you have not earned the fast track badge, uh, that's where you should start. If you're brand new, you can come to these sessions, uh, but more times than not, you'll probably leave here a little confused. We are not a diet here at Shibboleth. We're a lifestyle. There's a lot to learn, but once you learn it, I think you'll find that it's the most powerful weight management program uh, that's practical, practical, sustainable, and fun uh, it's the most powerful one in existence today uh, because it's situational, goal-based nutrition. Our states of mind changes daily, so your lifestyle has to change and, and be flex. You ha it has to be flexible and adaptable. I mean, how many of us, this is a good little teaching moment that I didn't plan on, how many of us through the years that have battled the bulge and prescription meds like me, you would start a program and for two or three days, you'd do great, but then it would be so restrictive, you'd go back to your old eating habits and your state of mind, constantly in flux, constantly changing. So we've created Shibboleth with the help of the Lord. We've created Shibboleth, which every day is a new day, and there's so many ways to do Shibboleth based upon what you're feeling and what you're going through, yet still lose weight each and every day. Now, I should say lose body fat each and every day, because sometimes, as we learn in these classes, the water weight uh, masks your results. But we talk about that so that you don't get discouraged uh, and you stay on the straight and narrow, steady as a clock, steady as a clock. Um, don't forget those T-shirts. Uh, that's a reward system. Uh, we've got people wanted them, but we've got a backlog of them. I'd love for people that have earned the right to unlock them to get them so that we can reduce that inventory. Uh, remember, we are just a little ministry first and foremost, and we try to come up with ways to keep people interested for almost no compensation. Uh, but we do want to stop and, and thank right now our lifetime members and partners. We could not help the people that we're helping without you, without our lifetime members and partners. So thank you for all that you do. And don't forget, if God gives you unction to do so, we need more partners. www.helpshiboleth.com. www.helpshiboleth.com. We had uh, Brandy Norman earn the Lady of Discipline badge for consistent journaling. And Connie Hood and Angela Moses, 21 perfect days in a row. Both of them, great job. Uh, some Soldier and Spartan and Savage badges were earned. And how about this? How about this? Special recognition for Angela Chai. Just got her 225-pound badge. Isn't that great? Lost 225 pounds. Great job, Angela. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We've got a few people with us on Facebook. Hello, Kimberly on Facebook. Let, let me get this started. We've got a question right out of the gate. Uh, this looks to be a uh, not a beginner question, but we'll get into it. I'm about to start experimenting with hemp bar recipes. 
what is the best way to find out the criteria for recipes? A mentor appointment? Uh, me, Sasha, who should I talk to about this recipe? You could just shoot me over a, a Facebook message about the ingredients that you're wanting to use. The hemp bars that I promote uh, are basically um, low glycemic chocolate, dark chocolate, nuts of various types, or uh, dried fruit of various types with hemp hearts. They're real simple. There's not much to them. So for your recipe, you would have to keep it very simple like that. Because if you don't, the problem with hemp hearts is as delicious and helpful as they are, they do have and contain a lot of healthy fats. But we can still store healthy fats. So if you add too much sugar, something that's high glycemic, too much honey, those types of things, then you're going to get yourself in trouble with hemp hearts. So you'll have to stay real simple with that recipe. Uh, it, it will have to be, you can use things like peanut butter, uh, dark chocolate, um, any, basically any sugar-free chocolate will work. Uh, a condiment's worth of nuts or dried fruit. And then there's a recipe in the library. You might want to uh, look at that recipe in the recipe library for those people that want to make their own hemp bars and don't want to buy them from the place we get them, if you're wanting to do that, look at that recipe and build your recipe off that recipe. But if you feel like you need a mentor appointment to discuss that with uh, Joni and the team, I'm sure they'll be able to help. If you've already got in mind your ingredients, just shoot them over to me on Facebook and then bear with me. Um, I'm, I never get caught up, uh, but I'll try to look out for your your ingredients list and kind of advise. Any questions, comments, let's get started. This is a great time to keep you moving forward on your journey. This is our question and answer session. Uh, as you go through the fast track videos and learn our system uh, for living and eating, uh, you're inevitably, uh, because of personal situations, going to need some adjustment or modifications, or there may be something you just don't understand. A lot of times uh, I'll hear from clients who don't come to class much, and they'll say, it seems to be some contradictions uh, with the way we're approving food. There's not. Uh, what, what happens is we approve foods and give each food a rule so that based on the situation, you can use it in such a way that you can lose weight. And, you know, as situations change, the, your personal rules will change. What are we trying to accomplish? If we're trying to lose body fat, if our goal is to lose body fat, everything we eat throughout the day has to accomplish two things. Do y'all know what the, the two most important things are? Forget all the noise. Forget all the commercial noise that you hear out there where they're trying to sell you the consumer a product. Hear ye, hear ye. What are the two things that you must accomplish on a daily basis to lose body fat? Stephanie, I'll get to that good question in a moment. There's two things, not water, though we have rules and water's included in the rules. There you go. I see it coming. So you have to operate, number one, you can do all the wishful thinking you want to. But you must operate in a calorie deficit. And if you want to lose body fat efficiently, you must control insulin through food combining. Those are the only two things that you must do. Now, why? what about someone mentioned water? I thought I had to drink water. You do. Hear me out. We have daily disciplines that we live by that creates a perfect day. And if we live by those daily disciplines, we will operate in a calorie deficit and we will control insulin. It's that simple. That's why I started 20 years ago with my daily disciplines, drinking my water, go through the fast track videos, drink my water, journal, food combining to control insulin, the right daily rations up to three eating episodes a day, and give my digestive system time to digest, 
Uh, don't graze, if you will. Don't graze. The timing rule could actually say no grazing. And then remember to give God the glory. You know, it, it, the Bible tells us these things. We seem to be culturally, not, not you all, but culturally getting away from the Word of God. Uh, and, and you look around and you see the unintended consequences of such. And the Bible tells us whatever we do, whether we eat or drink, we do it all for the glory of God, do it all unto the Lord. It does make a difference. So if you do, if you follow those daily disciplines and have a perfect day, after two perfect days, you are efficiently burning body fat. Why did the scales go up yesterday? Well, you could be retaining water. That doesn't mean you didn't lose fat. There are more than eight pounds in a gallon of water. And your body is a big sponge. You're going to have water fluctuations. But if you're consistent daily with our daily disciplines, each and every week, each and every month, you're going to see a pretty significant and profound fat loss. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, someone asked um, about fruit. It's a good time to segue over there. Stephanie says, having difficulty understanding how to pair fruits. Did I miss it somewhere? Can I pair a category four plus five? You cannot. So we have food combinations. Stephanie, are you still with me so I can ask you some questions and we can all learn from this? Are you still with me? Perfect. Okay. So do you, first of all, do you know where to locate your food combination chart? Do you, do, you have, do you know where to find that? Do you have access to a food combination chart? You don't right now, but you, you do know what I'm referring to, though. I want to make sure you know what I'm referring to. Food combination chart. We can, we can go on and go there just so that we're all on the same page. Let me find that. It'll take me just a minute if you'll be patient with me. I think that that will help. I like to, so that you all know that you are being given the tools because there's so much information. You don't have to commit this stuff to memory alone until it is forged in your memory. You have all the tools necessary to answer these questions. So I'm going to go, and it just got moved. If y'all remember from yesterday, it just got moved. Uh, resources right here, fast track. Everybody see this? Now, her question is, can I have a four plus a five? What is, what, are, what is Stephanie and Travis talking about? A category four is what type of food, everyone? I'm going to go to resources while we're talking. And then I'm going to go to the Shibboleth Advanced Combination Chart. Okay, this is your chart. This is, there's power in this chart. Correct. A category four is a protein plus a fat. Can the body easily store protein as, as uh, excess fat via, by, by way of love handles and thigh mass? <laughs> no. No, protein is really hard to store for the body to store as fat. But fat is already in the form of fat. And it's easily stored as fat if we have a secretion of what, everyone? If my pancreas, correct, Chris, if my pancreas secretes insulin, insulin is a fat storage hormone, okay? So if I've got a category four steak, category four eggs, category four baby back ribs, category four uh, chicken wings, if I've got those category fours and I'm consuming them, if I don't over consume them, the fat in them Without insulin, the fat in them is going to be used as an energy source, and I'm not going to store it, okay? But now, Stephanie's asking, can I have fruit with that? Does fruit cause your blood sugar to go up? Yes, yes. So if my blood sugar goes up, let's, let's, give a, let's look at a situation. Let's say that I had steak and salad, okay? I had a steak and salad, 
and I used approved dressing. I used lettuce, cucumbers, cherry tomatoes as a condiment only, just a little smidge as a condiment. I use an approved Italian dressing, a little fat-free cheese, and I have my properly portioned steak. That's what we call a four plus a two. Is that going to be a problem, having that steak with a, an approved salad? No. Now, as my body sees this food, it begins to separate it, if you will. You know, we got protein and we got the fat. And the fat would be used as an energy source if I don't overeat the steak. But now let's say for dessert, I want that delicious watermelon that's over here on the porch. I want the watermelon. And I eat the watermelon. The watermelon is going to elevate my blood sugar. My pancreas has to regulate that by secreting insulin. That's a fat storage hormone. Now what happens to the, the fat in that steak? What's going to happen? You're going to store it. You're going to store it. But Travis, I'm really craving. Now, Stephanie, I'm going to keep rolling with this. Uh, Travis, I'm really craving. I want to have a perfect day. I don't want to have a holiday. And I'm really craving. I'm really craving that watermelon. So what could I do? Could I do the following? Could I, on the grill, could I grill me chicken breast, have my chicken breast salad and watermelon? Could I do that without a problem? Yes, because the chicken breast, if I don't add fat to it, it's just lean protein. I had an approved salad, delicious salad, and then I had my Category 5 watermelon. What changed there? No, almost no fat. Almost no fat. And because I had no fat, then even though I'm going to get a little blood sugar impact and I'm going to get a little fat bus release, th that fat bus has got nothing to latch on to. So we don't have a significant problem there if we don't overeat. Let me ask you, could I do the following? Could I have steak and an approved salad with a palm full of berries on my salad? That's a fruit. Could I do that? Why could I do that? How am I using those berries? Right. I'm only using a condiment's worth. I'm only using 50 calories or less, and that's not going to be enough to spike my blood sugar. Stephanie, does that help? Does that illustration help? Now, how would you have known that if you weren't in class? If I know what a four is, and I know what a five is, and I look at my chart, I won't find a four and five together. Does that make sense, everyone? Beautiful thing, beautiful thing. So whatever I, I build my meals, listen, I build my meals based upon what I'm craving. So when I crave fruit, I don't give it up. I just make sure I couple it with the leanest of proteins and dense fibrous carbs, and then I portion control, and I won't have any problem. Now, does that mean I can't have a hot dog and watermelon at a grill party, at a pool party, a hamburger and, and cantaloupe, uh, those types of things? You certainly can. That's what your holidays are for. Uh, during the weight loss phase, you get six holidays a month until you get all that weight off that you want to get off. And then when you go into maintenance, you can have almost half the month off, 12 holidays. Annette asked, can you have hemp hearts with fruit? It's not ideal, okay? This is what we call an advanced topic because it, we're getting into perfect pairings now. We're getting into perfect pairings. So hemp hearts do have quite a bit of fat in them. So we have to be careful but they're very slow digestion, di digesting. A steak doesn't have any fiber in it. A hemp heart does have a lot of fiber in it. And them being slow digesting and having protein and fiber already built into them, we don't get a profound blood sugar spike. So with hemp hearts, if you want to perfectly pair them with low glycemic fruit, you can do that if you watch your calories. Low glycemic fruit includes berries, 
apples, oranges, and grapefruit. We still don't recommend it unless you're in maintenance, but you could perfectly pair some hemp hearts or hemp flakes along with uh, some low glycemic fruit. Again, I know we've got more new people these days, so please don't leave here discouraged. If you'll notice, many of the members, they're like, oh, I get it now. All I'm doing is filling in some gaps from them. What you need to do to make the most of these classes is watch those fast track videos and earn your fast track badge. Then all this st stuff starts it starts fitting together. You start getting the philosophy. You start understanding why we do what we do. Because again, it's all about ending our days and weeks in a calorie deficit while controlling insulin. That's, that's our objective. There are types of fats that we can have and still have fruit and still have carbohydrate like a potato. Does anybody remember what that fat is? What we call that fat in class? MCT, Chris is on it, medium chain triglyceride fats. They have almost no propensity to be stored as a fat. Paula asked a really good question. Would hemp flakes be better paired with fruit or no difference? Hemp flakes would be better. If you logic that out, why do you think hemp flakes as a perfect pairing with low glycemic fruit would be better than hemp hearts? Hemp flakes have less fat. Very good, Patricia Hurt. Very good. They have less fat, so they're better with low glycemic fruit than our hemp hearts. Liz asked, at what point are you losing fat and not water weight every day? Let's, let's forget water weight fluctuation for a moment. Every day that you end in a calorie deficit and every day that you control insulin through proper food combining, you are losing fat. So how do I know how much fat? It's really simple. It's, it's so simple. I'm amazed that it doesn't get taught more. How many calories are stored in an extra pound of fat? I carry a lot around my waist when I'm not in shape. My love handles, right? There are 3,500 calories in a pound of fat. So if I end today in a 1,000 calorie calorie deficit, how much fat did I lose? Think about it. Almost one third of one pound, right? So if I end the day in a thousand calorie calorie deficit, and that's easy to do, for example, I could operate in a 500 calorie calorie deficit with my food intake. And then I could, opera, I could go for a, an hour brisk walk and burn another four to 500 calories. That's 1,000 calories a day. Boom, just like that. Calorie deficit, I controlled insulin. Without controlling insulin, you won't lose a third of a pound of fat. But if I control insulin, follow the daily disciplines, then I'll lose every day that I'm in a 1,000 calorie calorie deficit, I'll lose about one third, pound of one, fat, uh, one, third of one pound of fat. And you say, that's not much. Are you kidding me? Think about this. This is one pound. So a third of it is about this much. My fingers and up. Are you telling me that losing this much hunk of chunk every day for a week isn't going to make a difference? That's crazy good. Crazy good. Don't listen to the scales. Listen to your weekly timing chart. If you are diagnosing your days right, perfect or holiday, then what you need to pay attention to is your weekly timing chart and not the scales, okay? The scales are a liar. They are not measuring fat gain or fat loss. They're measuring total weight gain, total weight loss. 
and you're going to have water fluctuations uh, much, much more profoundly than you are fat fluctuations. Fat's going to come off consistently. The only way the scales ever tell the truth is if you look at them July 1st compared to August 1st. Then if you haven't lost weight, then you're kidding yourself. You didn't put forth a, a good effort, okay? Are most of the recipes in the library for maintenance? No, ma'am. How do we know if it's a good recipe for weight loss? How would we know if it's a good recipe for weight loss? Assuming we portion control the recipe. Correct. The negative numbers. You have a weight loss meter attached to most items in the food library and in the recipe library. A negative number, portion controlled, means it's fantastic for fat loss. Minus three would be the best. Any other questions? This is a good class today. Now, typically when I think we haven't done a good job in class, people tell me it was great. And when I think we really nailed it, people tell me it was not that great. But this feels like a good class. It feels like we're asking good questions and we're learning a lot. Deborah has a question about bacon grease. If you cook bacon and then fry your eggs in the grease, is that bad on an all-protein day? Well, let's say it right so that everybody's clear. If you're referring to a lion or shark day, and you fry your eggs in real bacon grease, that's not a problem. On a lion or shark day, that's not a problem. If you portion control it, because you're talking about a lot of calories in that grease, okay, a lot of calories. Now, would that be a problem if I was having uh, a regular perfect day? then it would be a problem. We're going to store the worst kind of fat. Bacon grease is the worst kind of fat. Why are we allowed to have it on a line or sharp day? Because if you follow the daily rules, it'll be used as energy and it won't be stored. Isn't that beautiful? Man, makes me want to shout. I just wish I could get other people to, to get it. You know, I can have whatever I want as long as I follow the system and I'll still lose body fat at a tremendous rate. What are your thoughts about running versus walking during weight loss? Is one better than the other for weight loss? Now, for me, because of my joints, uh, I prefer brisk walking. I don't like my knees. I have issues. I don't like my knees to take that pounding that comes from uh, running. But when you ask which is better for weight loss, it's more easily explained this way. Whichever one of those, you can get yourself into your target heart rate zone and stay there the longest. So it doesn't matter if it's running. It doesn't matter if it's walking. Whichever one will allow you to get to your target heart rate zone for fat burning the quickest and then the one that will allow you to stay there the longest. Because if you go under your target heart rate zone, or you go too far over it, then you will not maximize fat loss. To determine your target heart rate zone, you take the number 220 minus your age times 70% times 0.70. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Bear with me. Can y'all see my little whiteboard? Can y'all see this? I don't know if you can see it. I haven't been using it. Okay. So I, let's, I'm 51. I'm about to be 52. But I'm just, for number's sake, I'm going to um, use my, uh, I'm going to round down. I'm going to pretend I'm a little younger for number's sake. So I take 220 minus my age. I'm 50 almost 52, but I'm going to put 50. Let's pretend I'm 50. 
and I'm going to subtract, and that's going to leave me with the number 170. Okay, now I take 0 0.70 times that number, and I'm going to get 119. Okay, so my target heart rate zone should be between, I give myself a variance of, of 10 points below and 10 points over. So at my age, my target heart rate zone when I'm briskly walking, I need to get it to 109 up to 129 and I need to stay there as long as I can. Now let's say walking allowed that, but I could only hold out before my knees start hurting for 15 minutes. But then walking, briskly walking, I can get to this number and I can stay there for an hour. Which one would be better for weight loss in that scenario? Now I gotta figure out how to stop this thing. I can't figure it out. Oh, there we go. Sherry says, I'm 68. My target heart rate is 106. But when exercising, running, I'm usually at 120 to 150. Is that okay? It's not bad. The, the higher range for you is good for your cardiovascular dexterity and strength. But for maximal fat burn, I would try to keep it around 120 for you. Around 120. As close to that as you can get it. Is Kashi Go cereal okay in weight loss with Fair Life Milk? Well, I don't know. Let's go and look. We want to go and look. We don't want to leave this program to chance, do we? Because if I just guess, and let's say that it's not, let's say that it's not okay. And now I did something I thought was okay, but I didn't take the time to verify. And now I've got the fat bus running through my system. I don't realize it, and I'm frustrated with my results. So let's go to resources. Let's go to the food library, and let's type in Kashi and see what comes up. I wonder if there's any in here. Let's see. So here we go. Here's all of the Kashi cereals. Now, this doesn't mean that all of them are approved, but I've got Kashi, et cetera, et cetera, all these different. Do you see yours on here? D Deborah, do you see any on here that you might want to use? I would be going with the negative number ones. I would be going with the negative number ones. Let me take a look. Let's see. Here's one, Kashi Golane Cinnamon Vanilla. It's a perfect pairing item, and it says, I must have it with Kroger Car Master Milk or Fat-Free Fair Life Milk. So, yep, I could do that. So you always want to go through that process, Deborah. Now, that can be really frustrating in our instant gratification society. We want the answers right now. And uh, that, that's not going to happen until Elon Musk finishes up the Neuralink and they put all the wires in our head. And then we won't even have to go to the computer. Heck, we won't even have to speak. We'll be able to read each other's minds. That's going to happen if the world doesn't come to an end and God tarries is coming. Uh, that's going to happen before 2030, actually. It's already happening. A lot of people don't know it. But at that point in time, you'll have the entire Shibboleth database just in your mind. I don't know what I'll do after that. Y'all won't need me for class anymore. But you'll have it all in your mind. It's really, it's really going to happen. Nobody believes me, but you're not listening to the right stuff. So I'm telling you, it, until then, we still have to go on our app or the website or get a mentor and uh, verify, verify. Let me ask you, is that two minutes I just spent, is that worth it? Or would I rather provoke the fat bus uh, and have to not, not be able to get in efficient fat burning for two days? Which one would you rather do? Spend that two minutes until you, you have it memorized or wait for two days to get back into fat burning. Just something to think about, everyone.
Is last night's Top Gun wrap-up recorded? It is. It was recorded, uh, and it will be put in the library as soon as the uh, Lara and Liza can get to it today. Uh, they'll do their best to put it in there. Uh, and, and if if uh, it's not happening timely enough for you, just reach out to them and ask them to send it to you when they're finished with it. It has to be processed, downloaded, processed, and then put on the website. So uh, I'm hoping that they are working at that today. They generally do a really good job. Is it better to take all of your holidays for the month in a row than hit it hard? Uh, it's not, it doesn't matter really. It, it, it doesn't matter really. Um, in the, yes, it can matter if you've got a deadline, okay? Um, but if we look at the course of a year, it's not going to matter that much. Um, it is actually better to take uh, two in a row rather than spread them out during the week. In, in other words, to have a holiday on Wednesday and on Saturday, you never get into deep fat burning status. Uh, so, but if I had Monday through Friday and then took Saturday and Sunday off, I would have more days of actual efficient fat burning. Uh, but it really doesn't matter. It's based upon your situation. For me, I play a game with myself. I only have holidays when I earn them. If I haven't earned the holiday, I don't have the holiday. Even though I'm allowed six in a month, I still make myself earn the holiday. If I'm in maintenance, I have to have three perfect days before I allow myself to have a holiday, and then I still probably won't have one. Uh, if I'm in weight loss mode, I have to have six perfect days before I have a holiday. Uh, Deborah says, I'm getting multiple notifications about how much weight I could lose a day. I don't, I don't know why that's happening. You're asking me why that's happening. I, I, don't, I don't know. If you're entering, I'm guessing, if you're having a tech support issue, let's reach out to Joni and see if you're, if you're having issues. You shouldn't be getting duplicate notifications. Every time that you input your weight, Every time you input your weight and there's a change, then it will notify you about your trend. You're trending up, trending down. It's not to alarm you. Uh, it's to let you know, hey, here's the trend, to keep you aware, to create awareness. It sounds like Janice is saying Sasha has some trouble she's working on. There's a lot of changes on the website, which usually creates other breakdowns in places. So maybe I'm just not aware of what's going on there. Any other questions? Anybody at all? Are all hearts and minds clear? I want to welcome our new folks again. I hope you'll go through the fast track system and tune in to as many live classes as you will. Is it beneficial to have perfect days? Mentally, not physically. Um, mentally, for some, not physically. Um, it's never, never good for your physical body to eat trash or eat too much. Uh, that's another myth that having a big blowout is good to speed up the metabolism. Having a big blowout never speeds up the metabolism. If you lose a lot of weight after a big blowout, maybe it's because diarrhea or, you know, something, but it's not, you're not losing body fat. When you have a big blowout, it's always harmful to your body. Uh, but sometimes it can be mentally helpful to allow yourself some time off. 
how many line days in a row is good? As many as you want to, assuming your doctor's okay with that. Um, I don't like to see people make a lifestyle out of a lion day because it uh, eliminates uh, a food group. And we don't want to eliminate a food group in our lifestyle. We only eliminate food groups for a set amount of time to get some momentum or to determine what foods may be uh, causing us some issues through toxicity uh, or, at, uh, that are, have allergens or whatnot. Uh, but we never want to long-term uh, ignore a food group. That's what's wrong with every single diet out there in my opinion. Uh, long-term, that's not good for your health. If it, if it grew from the ground, now cereal is not a food group. If it grew from the ground, roams the earth, uh, you should not avoid those foods uh, permanently. So a lion day is a, a great day to have as part of a food elimination protocol or to get some fat loss momentum or to simply be able to enjoy some real bacon and real cheese for a few days. But they're not going to hurt you. Uh, I just don't want to see you make it a permanent lifestyle any more than I'd want to see you uh, adopt a vegan lifestyle. Yeah, four in a row is, is fantastic. That's fun. I've done most, the most I've done in a row is seven days and I loved it best I've ever felt, but I, I'm aware that I'm not getting any good bacteria in my gut when I'm eating meat. So I double up on my probiotics, uh, and, um, I, I, I like to eat plants because that's where you get the good bacteria. Uh, you keep your gut health. If you went permanent on a lion and shark day and you didn't supplement with probiotics, I, I'm, I fear it would cause you some gut health problems in the future, which means could, uh, not, could really affect your immune system negatively over a long period of time. Now, the thing affecting immune system much more uh, then the lack of plants in your diet is excess fat. So if I'm eliminating excess fat, even if I'm not having a food group, uh, I'm doing much better. But when I get into maintenance, I need to include all food groups. Liz, that's a, that's a tough question to answer. Um, does the scale go up or down on lion days? Well, most days they're going to go down. Because let's rehash it again. If you operated on that lion day in a calorie deficit, and then you had your 16-hour fast after it was over, you're going to be neutralizing insulin, and you're going to be in a calorie deficit. So you've lost fat. But could you gain weight? Well, certainly you could. Because what if that day you worked out for the first time in two or three weeks? And the next day you get up and you're sore. Why is that? And the way and, and you lost a half a pound of fat. We went through that math earlier. You you lost, let's say you lost a half a pound of fat, but you you worked out so hard, you've got micro tears in your muscles, and they filled with water to help the muscle recover and repair and protect it. And and then you, you're storing a quart of water throughout your body. How much does a quart of water weigh, everyone? We got to keep working on our mindset and get away from using the scales as our only tool for success. So if I lost a half a pound of fat, but I retain a quarter. Hey guys, I'm having still having problems with Zoom. It kicked me out of here. Um, it kicked me off. Sorry about that. So let's let's get back to it. If I lost a half a pound of fat from a lion day, Liz's question, Liz Liz asked, does the scale go up or down? We can't ask that question now. I appreciate Liz asking it today. It gives me a topic to help everybody with. 
But my point here is that question will cause you to get discouraged and quit if you're asking that question because you're expecting the scales to go down, right? Am I right, everybody? Every perfect type day you have, Shibola perfect day of any type, you expect the scales to go down, yes or no? Yes or no? You expect the scales to go down. And if they don't go down, you get discouraged. Okay? So watch. Watch. So if I lose a half a pound of fat because I operated in a calorie deficit and I controlled insulin, but I worked out and I'm, I have sore muscles and there's micro tears in the muscles that filled with water to protect the muscle and help the muscle recover because I'm deconditioned, and I hold on to a, a, a quart of water, which is easy to do. I've gained two pounds of water weight, lost one pound of fat. So I actually gained a pound and a half, right? They're going to go up though, Annette. They're going to go up, Annette. The, the scales are going to go up at times, even despite your best effort. You have to push through that because if, what about that time of month for the women? Does, do y'all gain any water weight during that time of the month? Is that a thing or is that a myth? So what if you had a lion day, you did everything right. You did every single thing right. Okay, you did it all right. But it, it's that time of month. And you lost a half a pound of fat. Because, is, that, would it, is it good to lose a half a pound of fat in a day? This is one pound. If you lost half that, is that good? Y'all getting quiet on me. Is that a lot to lose in a day? That's a lot. So you lost it. Whew, it's gone. You lost it. But it's that time of month. How much can some of y'all pull in? How, how much weight gain can you experience from it being your menstrual cycle? Two, three, four pounds? Is that possible? Three pounds? Okay. So if, if you just did your best and you lost a half a pound of fat, but you're holding on to temporarily holding on to three pounds of water weight, the scales are going to show that you went up. And if you get discouraged, are you ever going to make progress if you get discouraged and quit? Why not focus on consistency and the weekly timing chart and just let God take care of this for you, right? Disciplined eating, a perfect day or some type of perfect day, no more than six holidays a month, then the scales will always reward you if you look at them, you can look at them every day. But if they're discouraging you, just go put them in your closet, okay? There's going to be times, you know how many times I hear I had a perfect day and gained weight, didn't work for me. One day, one day, you, you're talking about water fluctuation. You, you cannot control that. Have y'all, in these 11 a.m. sessions that I come to, uh, I've been doing them for about three months every day, every weekday now. How many times does this question get asked? It's a good question. Don't take this wrong. But how many times, you're, you're all going through the same thing. How many times does this get asked? Have y'all ever heard me not address it? <laughs> so my point here is not to admonish, but to say this is something the devil is just pounding y'all with all the time. You know, it's not working for you. It's not working for you. It's not working for you. It is working. And you all know it's working. You just feel better after one perfect day. Why wouldn't you want to just keep feeling better? Don't let the scales discourage you. Calorie deficit, insulin control. Andy says 10 perfect days in a row and no weight loss. That is discouraging. Andy, if that happened to you, you need to get a mentor appointment. Uh, after 10 perfect days, you should have fat loss unless you're getting really leaned out and have lost a lot of weight. 
uh, and you're getting close to go. If you have more than 30 pounds to lose and you had 10 perfect days and you didn't lose weight, you need to get a mentor appointment. Something is not right. Okay. So Andy, are you journaling? We'd love to have somebody look at your journal. If, are you journaling? Let, let me know in the thread and we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep attacking this and, and see if we can't get you some help. That's right. Good comment, Patricia Hurt. Very wise comment. None of us want the scales to go up, but they're going to fluctuate, and we just need to understand that. Donna, uh, I, I, I was good. I have three days, only two meals, and I was the same weight. I was discouraged and took a holiday. And how does that work out for us, Donna? Did that help the scales? Sometimes it does, you know, if you're only concerned with the scale weight. Let me ask y'all this question. Let me ask you this. Can you eat wrong, eat too much, and see the scales drop sometime? Have you ever seen that happen? I have. It works in reverse, too. Uh, you, you did everything wrong and the scales dropped, okay? But did you gain fat? It's just biological. Yeah, you can see the scales drop, but you gained fat. That's why I'm giving you a system that allows for you to control insulin and operate in a calorie deficit. So month over month, you can lose 8 to 15 pounds with relative ease, but you have to stay focused on the disciplines and not the scales. The scales are whipping some butts in here today. Uh, Jetabug, I'm not so sure I'm on board with you there. Um, you like your creamer a lot. Uh, it, if it's, if it's a high sugar content creamer, we wouldn't want to do that. Uh, you're going to spike too much fat bus. I'm not sure how much creamer or what type of creamer you're putting in your coffee. If you'd like me to analyze that for you, send over everything that's going in that coffee, I can tell you how to have it, whether a meal or a snack or a freebie. Uh, but no, we don't want to add a lot of uh, high sugar content to our pre-digested coffee uh, and call that a meal episode. Uh, you may have heard me say something to someone in a, that's needing personal help that's not group help where I told them, yeah, I do that because you won't stop doing it and uh, you'll just have to count it as one of your two meals instead of three meals. Or There's always a way, even if you're a Reese Cup fanatic, there's always a way uh, that we can make it work. Maybe you have a Reese cup with four cups of broccoli and a chicken breast, you know, and you can only have it one time a day. There's always a way, uh, but I would need to know more about this creamer because you could really, I don't think you're kidding, are you? You're using a lot of creamer. So yeah, that could cause too much fat bus provocation. Let's look at, you know, yeah, I assume you're using regular coffee. What what sugar and creamer are you using? And then we would know how to uh, to to place that within your your day. We wouldn't want to teach that to a group. We wouldn't want to do that. Uh, a lot of the things we do personally is not going to work out very well for an entire group. But if I understand what you're up against on a day to day basis, and you're willing to abide by the rules given, you could probably still lose weight. Coffee's low calorie. I'm sure you could keep the – so even if you're under your um, ideal calorie range, you could still have a problem if you're spiking insulin uh, significantly. We cannot efficiently lose body fat with, with a, uh, spiking insulin. Can't do it. Very good, Darla. Did, Darla says, I did not gain it overnight. Not going to get it off overnight. That's right. 
Suzette says, the enemy, Satan, is uh, trying to convince me that getting the last 10 pounds off are impossible. Uh, you just need to put a space between the M and the P. That's all you need to do. I'm possible. Uh, you need to get rid of that thought. You know that that's not accurate. Uh, there's nothing special about your biology. You can get it off. You just have to operate in that calorie deficit, and you have to control insulin. Uh, and as we get close to goal, it is more difficult, and many of us find ourselves having to increase our energy expenditure. I lost all of my weight to a point that I felt comfortable in my clothing for the first time without exercise. I looked good in my clothes. But when I took my clothes off, I didn't look too good. So I had to start incorporating exercise. Uh, if you really want to get that last 10 off, you're probably going to have to continue to eat the way you ate to get down to that point uh, and then increase your energy expenditure. Perfect, Andy. Yes, get that mentor help. And uh, I hope you'll let me know in, a, in another class what was going on there. Uh, I, I would recommend, hope the mentor will recommend, let me know if this makes sense to you, Andy. We're going to have to stimulate your metabolism. And I would do that with three days uh, in a row. Pick out three days. You know you're going to be busy, not going to have food on your mind as much. Three days in a row of red column. That'll get you momentum. Two to three eating episodes, no grazing in a portion control container. And uh, that, that way will start coming off. It, the, the red column uh, meal ideas, they're simple. Uh, but you're actually eating exercise in a plate. There's no way to have three days in a row of properly portioned red column meals and don't graze and not blow towards fat off the body. Darla is asking me about sugar-free creamer. Uh, no, so I don't know if you've seen all of Jettabug's posts. She says, I like creamer more than I like coffee. So I know I'm dealing with something a little different than approved coffee there. So Darla, uh, Shibboleth approved coffee is black coffee, and you can use 15 calories of any type of creamer, uh, and you can use any sugar substitute, okay, like monk fruit, xylitol, stevia. You could use any of those, and your coffee's still a freebie. If you use Coffee Mate sugar-free, Creamer that's 15 calories or less, that's fine. If you use a little fat-free Fairlife milk, that's fine. So, no, we're not abandoning our coffee principle. Uh, this is a group setting, and Jettabug's asking a personal question because she likes her coffee in an unapproved way, and she would like to figure out a way to make it work within her, her daily living. She's now in maintenance. Of course, yes, Deborah. Zero calorie creamer is allowed, uh, and sugar substitutes are allowed. See, so don't get it mixed. Jettabug is in maintenance, and Jettabug is wanting to personalize her program and start incorporating things that aren't on the regular program. We would not advise everybody here to do what Jettabug is asking to do. Uh, you're not if you're not in maintenance. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Lauren, I usually have a large iced coffee made from home. I like a lot of creamer. I also add a scoop of collagen. So I count it as my meal replacement. That's fine. Adding the collagen ups the protein. Uh, and if you're counting it as an eating episode rather than a freebie, perfect. Great job. Correct, Sarah. It, sometimes it can feel like those pounds are coming off stubbornly, but they're not. They're not. It's all related to the amount of calorie deficit you're in and how well you're controlling insulin. Uh, why does it seem like it takes so long sometimes? Because we're miserable. You know, anything that you do that you don't want to do, that you're just doing, the end justifies the means. So, in other words, let's play pretend. Let's let's pretend that you really don't like the Shibboleth lifestyle, 
but it works and you want to get to your goal, it will seem like it's going to take forever because you're not enjoying the process. Once you start enjoying the process, you start rewriting how you think about food, how you think about what you enjoy. You, you, you get rid of FOMO attitude, fear of missing out all the time. If you really go, man, I love my lifestyle. I love my lifestyle. Let me, let me give you another thing. Our relationship with food is kind of like a relationship with a spouse. If you're truthful, if you've been married a long time, are there some days you just tired of them? Be honest. Now, if you start picking on them in your mind and in your heart and you talk about everything wrong with your spouse, you can lose sight of what's great about your spouse. You have to talk yourself into it every day. You don't go, I hate my husband. You go, I love my husband. I love my husband. Here's all of his many benefits. I love my wife. I love my wife. Here's all that she does and there's many benefits. You don't go, you don't start picking on one thing about them that's driving you nuts, right? So the same thing's kind of with your eating lifestyle. If you're every day, I hate this, but I got to do it. You'll never do it. You'll never stick to it. It'll seem like it takes forever to get those last pounds off. But if you're just living, man, if you're just living and not dieting, you just live it and you love it and you talk to yourself all the time about all the great things about your diet. This is great. I can, have, I can focus on what I can't have, not on what I can't have and lose weight. comes with all these many benefits and you're just talking like that in your head all the time and you start enjoying the process. The time to your goal will seem like it's sped up. But we, we, just, we just try to talk ourselves out of a blessing every day. That's, that's what humans tend to do. No, nah, they did it in the Garden of Eden. Here's the tree of life. Here's all these other good trees in the garden. You can eat off of all of them. But there's one, one tree you can't eat off of. And they had all these great trees. They had the tree of bacon. They had the tree of uh, hemp hearts. They had the tree of eggs. They had the tree of seafood. They had the tree of broccoli. They had the tree of apples. They had all these trees. <laughs> and, and they could eat off all of them and live eternally in bliss and happiness. But there was one tree sitting in the midst of that garden that God said, you can't have from that tree, but you can have from all the others. Which tree did they then want off of? What did they want to eat off of when they was told they couldn't? They wanted to eat off the only tree they could. And they lost sight of all the stuff they could have that's good for them. And they chose the bad. And we do that too, y'all. I tell you what, I try my best every day to focus on what I can have, not on what I can't have. I have my menu. I'm not interested in your menu. Can you go to McDonald's and order some crab legs? Can you go to McDonald's and order crab legs? No, it ain't on the menu. and You ain't even thinking about it. Can you go to Red Lobster and order a Big Mac? No, and nor are you thinking about it because you got a menu in front of you. You all have to develop your own menu that you love. You need your own menu that you love. Your appetizers, your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner. And then... Focus on that. Focus on what you can have and not on what you cannot have. Excuse me. You're not difficult, Jettabug. You've just performed well. We'll have to, when I can get more time, we'll start having to have maintenance classes uh, so that we don't confuse the... Uh, the, the, the folks that haven't reached maintenance, but we don't mind it at all. It gives them something to look forward to. I wish I could do one-on-one -on -one nutrition, but it doesn't allow it, and uh, it, I'd have to charge for it, and um, I, don't, I just it breaks my heart to charge people money for one-on-one -on -one stuff.
So I just prefer to do the best I can in the time that we have here together in the group. Very good, Cheryl. I lost 20 more pounds than I thought I could. Whoever asked earlier about uh, discouragement, this is important. Cheryl's been around a while and done great. I lost 20 more pounds than I thought that I could. But I did Tiger 16 days, two eating episodes a day, no snacks, and 100,000 steps a week. That's all it takes. What Cheryl, Cheryl just give you all the recipe for getting those stubborn pounds off. Great job, Cheryl. That's right, Liz. Liz Duncan says, I meal prep for hubby, and he only focuses on what he can have, and that's it. And there's so much that we can have that I think is delicious, so why wouldn't I focus on that? That's right, Patricia. I'm glad you said that. Patricia says, that's why I think my Shibboleth was God-inspired. Uh, it it is about what works for us personally, exactly. No, I, I did not. Jettabug, uh, what I suggested was send me what your coffee recipe is and then wait on me to get back to you. Facebook's probably the best place today, uh, Messenger. And, but tell me what's in your coffee uh, and the nutrition profile of each, and then I would be able to tell you how to have it, meal, snack, or freebie. Anybody else? Any other questions today? Diane on Facebook. Five years ago today, I found this program. Oh, August. Five years ago, August. I started 196. Wow, in 29 days came off of insulin. That's life-saving stuff. Bless the name of the Lord. Altogether, I've lost 50 pounds, but in February, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I'm on a chemo pill, hormone blocker. I gained back to 175. Still haven't put it all back on. It's been so hard to get back on track, but I'm trying. Back to 164, great job best program ever. God bless you, Diane. Everybody pray for Diane. She's been diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, Diane Scott. She's on Facebook. I hope that y'all will keep her in your thoughts and your prayers. Thank you for sharing that encouragement, Diane. May God be with you. May God heal you. And uh, you, you be a, an amazing cancer survivor and testimony for so many that are out there going through that. God bless you. So sorry you're going through it. And I hope everybody will keep you in their prayers. Diane Scott, everybody. All right, y'all. That's about all my time today. Uh, I will be back live um, tomorrow, Lord willing, at 11 a.m. Every day matters. Calorie deficit and insulin control. All right, y'all. Until tomorrow, y'all have a good one. I'm going to have a good one. God bless you.